Hey, 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 steady, Steve. Please like and subscribe. Please click on the Deck Heroes icon. Click on subscribe. It's 100% free. Blood in, blood out. <laughs> also, click on notifications just to make sure you don't miss out on any amazing content. I've got lots of varied videos to kind of give comments on from the Amazing Men Only channel. I'm not going to necessarily agree with the uh, narrator from the Men Only channel, but obviously, as always, he makes a lot of very, very good points. And that's the whole point of me doing this channel is that you can have different points of view and still be right. You know what I mean? So what, whatever your kind of truth is, your uh, perspective is, and how you handle things will be right to us or right to you. You know, it's all good. Anyway, this is the start, right? Um, I'm going to let, let, let Leslie, what she's got to say. Okay, so I got a serious question. So if I'm fucking with you, we talking, dating, I don't, I don't care. If I'm fucking with you, period. I'm going to cook, clean. I'm going to do your laundry. I'm just going to do that because as a woman, that's what I like to do. Um, but women be like, oh, you're giving him wife energy, this, that, and the third. You're doing too much too early. He's not going to... What is girlfriend energy? What the fuck am I not supposed to be doing? <laughs> like, I would just be confused. Ain't this what you're supposed to do so that they could be like, oh, I want to make her my wife because she just do everything I need her to do? If you with your man, you're not cooking for him. You're not cleaning. You're not doing this. Not doing that. Why would he want to make you a wife? He's going to be like, this bitch don't even do the bare minimum. Is it just me though? Like, I'm confused. I'm lost. Somebody put me on. Like, what am I not supposed to be doing? In a relationship, things... Right. I'm, I'm going to completely... The a completely different point of view with the narrator. So I'm going to get mine in first, right? So I think what she's saying is... She's giving that kind of energy to a man. And she actually wants to, to, to do nice things for him. And I think that's a nice thing to do. You know what I mean? So the narrator's not going to be wrong on his point of view. But I think, yeah, more so than trying to kind of have this kind of adversarial relationship with, with a man and expect it to turn into kind of a positive relationship or a relationship at all, because nobody wants to be around somebody that they're just butting heads with. Um, I think what, apart from, uh, listen, your eyelashes, definitely that, that's, that's got to go. Look in the mirror, for goodness sake. <laughs> but from everything else, you've got that kind, considerate mindset. You know what I mean? So uh, the narrator's going to give his point of view at the moment. And yes, doing nice things for somebody is not going to buy. It's not It's not going to guarantee you love or marriage in itself or or even be valued by the other side if they haven't requested it. But I think it's a good start in the same way that if, if, if you're her man is also actively looking out for her best interest in whatever way it is, he's got her best interest at heart. And obviously that's hobby material from his point of view and you are offering lots of wifey material from your point of view and there's no harm with him meeting you in the middle and doing the same things for you as well in the same household if that's what it is to be in the future you know what i mean so all good but anyway let's hear the narrator like cooking and cleaning are the bare minimum they are basic responsibilities things that everyone should be able to handle whether you're in a relationship or not if someone's only contribution to a relationship is doing household chores then they're missing the bigger picture entirely and here's where some women go wrong they think that doing just the minimum is enough to keep a man around, or that it somehow makes them a good partner. But the truth is, that's not what relationships are built on. A man isn't staying with someone just because they can fold laundry or make dinner. Those things might be appreciated, but they're not what holds a relationship together. A solid relationship comes from genuine connection, shared values, and putting in the effort to make each other's lives better. The problem is, some women think that if they do these basic tasks, they're already giving so much, and they expect everything in return emotional support, financial security, attention, and loyalty, without giving anything meaningful back. They think, I did this, so I deserve that. But real men see through that. Men want a partner who brings more to the table than just the ability to cook a meal. They want someone who can bring peace to their lives, support their goals, and be their biggest ally. And here's where the blame really falls on these women. They think they're doing enough, when in reality, they're not investing in the relationship emotionally. It's not about just doing... Again, but listen, I, I just need to jump in. I know he's going to finish in a minute. We're not blaming this woman for wanting to be caring. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is a positive thing. This is to say, I, I, this man early guy is really good. But at the same time, I think the energy of it is not, we're not criticizing the people who are nice. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, point taken that, you know, doing laundry and making food and wanting to look after somebody, it's a nice thing. Um, but it, it's not everything. Fair enough, but yeah, we want to actively encourage it on both sides. And uh, more of that, please, just to get rid of the uh, negativity and toxicity um, that we see. Anyway, let's go. Asks. It's about doing them for the right person with the right intentions. 
If you're only doing the minimum because you think it's what you should do, or because you're expecting something in return, then you're not building a relationship, you're negotiating. And that mindset is a fast track to failure. A lot of these women end up frustrated because they don't understand why their relationships aren't working out. But they've only been doing the bare minimum, thinking it's enough to keep a man happy, without realizing that men, especially good men, need more than that. They need someone who's there for them, someone who puts in the emotional effort, someone who respects and values them beyond basic chores. Let them know that you just told me that you just got pregnant by another guy and we're supposed to be married. But you know <laughs> right. right. Now, I think this next video, in the boss in itself is quite interesting. I think it's a bag of bullshit. I think it's all just staged bullshit. Because, and uh, I say I may be wrong, I might be wrong, but you've got a man there. You've been this type of... You, you haven't heard it yet, right? But there's somebody saying about our, um, the, the husband saying that the wife's not carrying his kid. We don't know how he knows or how he's so certain that she, his wife, is not carrying his child. But if this was the situation, would she just be standing there in view while you're recording like, like that and not make any, not be, you know, just be, a, would, would she handle it with this calmness? You know what I mean? And just stay in shot and not make any reference. Oh, that record me. What you recording me for? And, da, da, da. and I think it'd just be a more kind of emotional situation. Not necessarily, but um, I don't believe it. Anyway. And I think it's a bag of hell shit. But there's a concept. So let's just see what they've got to say. But that don't even matter because we got a baby on the way, so we can be able to take care. Who of has it. a baby on the way? About that, I have a baby on the way. Yeah, you have a baby on the way. Yes, but this baby can also be yours. What are you talking about? What you mean can also be mine? I can get you pregnant. Somebody else did. But right now that doesn't really matter. You have a baby that's about to come to the world. You have a baby that's coming to the world. We don't have anything that's coming to the world together. Exactly, but you're gonna be a great father. Who's the baby father? That doesn't even matter. Bro. Who's the baby father? It doesn't matter. You're right. It doesn't matter because it ain't me, and I'm not taking care of it. Why not? So what you gonna do? Why not? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you planning on doing? No. So you just saying you're just gonna abandon this baby? You abandoned me when you decided to go out and get pregnant by somebody else. Man, you didn't care about this marriage. You didn't care about me. All you cared about was yourself. I can't forget. That's 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 something that's unforgivable to me. It's, a, it's absolutely no, unforgivable. No, no, no. Oh, now you care about being my wife. Like, how long have you been cheating on me? This whole time I think that we're being married and we're together and we're committed yeah, and you've been out here going out having to get pregnant. That's okay, but, but listen, though. The baby that's going to come is definitely going to change all of this. This is not about to change nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. It's about to change something. Exactly. It's going it's to change everything. Happy. It's going to change. Don't it's gonna, happy we're not going to, we're nothing. Family. We're not going to be anything. So you are going to be in a happy family with this guy that you got pregnant by. Yeah. He's absolutely. I'm not in the picture. I'm not, I don't have anything to do with this. Why not? Because You're trying to make me want to take care of your, but you want me to take care of your child, your child, that's your child, that's not my responsibility. I'm caring a child for you though, right not, How are you caring a child for me if you got pregnant by somebody else? Because that doesn't even matter. Like, you, you didn't even let me know that you were trying to get pregnant. Yes, it would matter because you need to figure out what you're going to do with your child, with this man, and I have nothing to do with it anymore. Man, this, this is your problem. I'm about to say, no, this is going to be our problem. What you talking no, about? It's not, I have no, it's not. I have Okay, listen, we know where that conversation's going. Obviously, it's not the end of the video. When would you have a conversation on these lines? Come on. Come on. You're carrying our baby. It's not my baby, it's your baby. No, it's our baby. It could be your baby. <coughs> Come on. This is rubbish. It's rubbish. No. Anyway, let's see. Let's let's hear it out. Nothing to do with this, and it's crazy to me how you think that I'm actually absolutely supposed well, to be taking take care, care of your of this child. Why would you want to take care of this child? Because I didn't get. You. I'm not the one to make the, the baby with you. I'm, it's not my child. You did all the work, and guess what? You did all the work, and you can continue to do the work without me. I, want to say I have nothing to do with this. You can take care of the child. I can, but I'm not. Why? Because I'm not. I didn't get you pregnant. What are you saying? What? You sound so crazy right now. What do you mean? Why not? I don't, because you How are you okay with cheating, cheating on me, though? You make me sure. Let's get to the fact that you went and cheated on me. How, let's get to the fact that we're married. You cheated on a married man. You stressed it. You stressed, it. You stressed yourself out. You did this. You put this on yourself. You should have thought about that when you decided to go cheat on your husband of ten years with somebody that you won't even tell me who it is. They don't even matter. They they don't know about it. Don't even that matter. That's not my problem anymore. That's not my problem anymore. That's not. This is your problem now. We were supposed to be married. We are supposed to be a family. We're not anymore. I don't. I, I can't support somebody going out cheating on me and getting pregnant. Oh my god! Hey, look at how you acting. Like you don't even seem like you even care. I do care. That's what I'm saying. Like you don't act like you care. You seem like you care more about financial stability. I guess you can't take care of it, huh? And that's why you're telling me. No. Financial stability. She hasn't even mentioned anything about finances. I think she's just got to check this. Okay, pregnant by somebody else, not mine. Tick tick. Tick. No, this is this isn't gonna be anything. I think that we need to consider some stuff, reconsider some things. Um, right. 
I'm not, I'm not taking care of anything. I'm not, I, have, I don't want anything, anything to do with the child. And I don't want anything to do with you, actually. I don't want to have anything to do with the child or you. No, so you got to figure it out on your own. You got, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. But guess what? I just want the world to see what type of person that these women are. We got to protect ourselves against women like this. We have to protect ourselves against women like this. We can't trust them. Let this be an example to, for men to make better decisions in the future. This is this is the example of a woman you don't want to be with, though. Take heed. Yeah, 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 whatever. So I know marriages go through things. Some things are forgivable and some things aren't. In this situation, it's a little iffy. It's it's base by base situations. Would you have forgiven her? Would you take her back? Drop your comments. Let me know what you think. This is a wild one. This situation is beyond crazy, and it's a prime example of the entitlement that some women carry with them. This wife, pregnant by another man, expects her husband to raise the baby as if nothing's changed. The delusion is off the charts. It's mind blowing that someone could even think this way. Like. How can you expect someone to raise a child that isn't theirs and act like everything's normal? And the hypocrisy is real. Would she have the same attitude if the roles were reversed? Imagine if her husband got another woman pregnant. Would she still be preaching, oh, it doesn't change anything? Absolutely not. She'd be out the door in a second, talking about betrayal and disrespect. But when it's her mistake, suddenly, it's no big deal. That's the double standard a lot of men are tired of dealing with. And this is why mandatory DNA testing at birth should be a law. Too many men are out here unknowingly raising someone else's child, trusting their partner, and getting taken advantage of. This isn't just a rare situation. It happens way more often than people realize. A simple DNA test would clear up so much, and honestly, it's about time something like that was put in place to protect men from situations like this. Her real fear, deep down, is losing the financial security her husband provides. She knows that if he walks away, so does her lifestyle, and suddenly, things don't look so good. That's why she's trying to downplay the situation, hoping he'll stay. But let's be real, no self-respecting man should stick around and be made a fool of like that. In today's world, situations like this just prove why so many men are opting out of marriage altogether. The trust, loyalty, and respect that should be the foundation of a relationship are often nowhere to be found. So yeah, staying single and protecting your peace seems like the smartest choice in a generation where you can't even be sure you're raising your own child. Stay single, kings. Don't let yourself get trapped by someone else's lies. And no, <laughs> we're not, not interested in staying single for goodness sake. That's a, that, With this channel, that's the one thing I don't agree with at all. And I can't stand the agenda of even suggesting that men should stay single uh, in other words that uh, men shouldn't be with women what are you going to stay with the, just yourself or the men don't think so my brother nice try <laughs> nice try but the compulsory kind of dna testing um that's interesting uh that would be awesome if it just happened across the board that would be very fair a fair-minded thing for men and um i wish it was to be fair J just as a concept i mean they, they, there's reasons why they won't do it because uh, that would be a massive burden on the uh, social security system. You know what I mean? If men didn't have to finance other people's kids unknowingly. So um, it's never going to happen. But nice concept. Let's... Uh bad decisions. How many dates do you guys give someone before giving up on the spark? I'm specifically asking straight women who date straight men. I'm asking because I am personally on a journey this year to judge less quickly and write people off less quickly. And I've been really working on that. But I'm wondering if there's a certain number of dates that you guys give or it's just a feeling. I tend to think that I'm right. This is the thing. I've never been, I've never been wrong. <laughs> Spoken like a true Virgo. But I don't know. Maybe I have given up on people too quickly sometimes. So I'm just wondering. Looking like a true Virgo, I mean, I'm not into star signs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go quickly, but that's the first bullshit. That's the first bullshitometer. <laughs> Somebody makes direct reference to some kind of star sign as, as in having any meaning in a conversation, which is meant to have any kind of substance or be taken seriously on any level. It's, but anyway, let's go. Like five, like six, after you smash. I don't know. Anyway, here's my outfit. Kate Saint Laurent. This is Lisette, I think. I think it's very cute. I'm going to do like a brown Stella McCartney boot. Okay. This is one of those questions that shows how disconnected. Uh, listen, I think the the narrator gives a very, very serious response to this kind of, I think, a little flirty, harmless question about how many dates should you leave it until you kiss. I mean, the, the narrator's right. The narrator's right. But I don't think this woman is kind of drawing any kind of red lines, you know, don't cross that line, brother. Don't you cross that line. I think she's just being flirty and she's obviously excited about a date and I think that's nice energy to be fair. But anyway, let's see what he's got to, what the narrator has to say. Did some people are from the reality of dating today. She's asking straight women how many dates they go on before kissing their partner. But the truth is, it completely depends on the situation, the chemistry, and whether there's a real connection. There's no set number that guarantees when it's appropriate to kiss. But the funny thing is, it's not about how many dates it takes. It's about the intentions behind it. 
A lot of modern dating seems to revolve around these rules or timelines, like women think they can control when intimacy happens by sticking to some formula. The problem is, it's not about counting dates. It's about mutual interest and attraction. If there's no vibe, it doesn't matter if it's the first date or the tenth. The reality is, some women hold back and make a guy wait, thinking that will make him respect them more or build more value. But let's be honest, if a guy is into you, he's into you. Waiting won't necessarily make him more serious, just like kissing on the first date won't guarantee things will move too fast. It's about connection and honesty. Instead of focusing on how many dates it takes to kiss, maybe it's time to ask why we're still playing these games. It's 2024, communication is key. If you feel it, go for it. If not, don't. The whole idea of putting up arbitrary rules just shows how many women are still caught up in outdated dating mindsets, and they end up confusing themselves and missing out on real connections. I know it's plenty of women that watch my content. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, she's trying to go, but listen, it's just flirty little video, you know what I mean? There's definitely not nothing serious in it, and I actually like the positive energy of being bothered and just putting it out there to the world. And, you know, I mean, she may well get some kind of feedback from other people's experiences, and that's probably going to be positive and fun. You know what I mean? So that's that. Um, yeah, let's, look, let's leave it at that. Right, now this next lady, <laughs> look at what it says in the middle, how to play the game with men and win. So she starts off, and I'll, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the game away a little bit. Um, she starts off, and I think, okay, yeah, this lady actually knows a little bit about guys, and da, da, da. she's obviously done her research, but she's actually just trying to... She's basically a game player, out and out. So, um, oh my gosh, um, you'll see. And, you know, there's a lot of you that still want to be involved with men. And, like, I worked in the field, I was a dancer, like, I created content, like, I've done all of the things that has put me in the realm of dealing with men. In my Worked in the field, was a dancer. That's a strip club person, by the way. Humble opinion, you are still decentering men when you deal with men like a game, when you know how to play the game. So I'm gonna teach you how to play the game and you win the game if you still choose to deal with men. Before I get into it, me personally, I'm exhausted, okay? I'm exhausted playing the game because playing- If you still choose to deal with men. I have to raise it now, sorry to keep stopping, I won't stop it, I'll listen, I'm gonna let it run through, but uh, mostly. <laughs> but as I say, this is the, you, you, for ladies, you gotta think about where you're getting your advice from. You don't wanna get it from strippers, number one, and you don't wanna get it from women who don't like men. You know what I mean? If 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 she's a, she's a strip club person, right? So if you're getting your advice about how to deal with Johns, Johns are the people who frequent strip clubs, and uh, you know, ladies of the night. You don't want to get your advice in terms of how to deal with the John if you're really talking about everyday men. And if somebody's not interested in men, as I say, then I, you know, just take that advice for what it is. If that's the bracket that you want to fit in. And the game takes energy, okay? Because in order for a woman to play the game with a man, she has to become like a man in, in the head. Mentally, she has to become a man. And for a lot of women, that is too no, that's your fundamental mistake right there. That's your red, that is your red flag. If you're having to act like a man, then maybe you've gone down the wrong step and the outcome's gonna be that you're treated like a man because you've got two men in the room, <laughs> both. And, and, and especially if you go into the lowest denominator of a man, as I said, some kind of John, or at mm -hmm. best, some kind of lowest level, <laughs> Jim Green, some kind of lowest level man that you shouldn't really be aiming for anyway. So if you're going for a game player man, if that's what your aspiration is, and you're going to change your whole kind of approach to get a game player man, then maybe that's another red flag. You know what I mean? Go for higher level men. Much work. I am about to be 32 years old. I played the game. I got what I wanted out of the game. If I want to dibble dabble in the game, I'll play it again. But me personally, I don't feel like it. But to the women who still want to play the game, I got you. Okay, first thing is first. You have to quit taking in any form of romanticism. And when I mean that, I mean through the media. Quit listening to love songs, quit reading fantasy books, quit obsessing over these male celebrities, quit taking in any media that portrays men as being romantic, loving, kind, nurturing people, because it's fucking fake. It's not real. When you quit taking in that media, you have now lifted the veil, and now you'll be able to see men for who they really are. When, when you take away the media that's filling up your brain with this picture in your head of who men are, you are not going to be emotionally attached to men any longer. Naturally, it is going to detach you emotionally from men because the way that women get emotionally attached to men... Just think about the goal. It's the goal to not be emotionally attached to somebody. <laughs> oh, man, we all turn into masonries. And then we wonder why we go into this toxic kind of zone. Uh, anyway, let's see what other valuable advice that we're going to receive. 
they're not actually getting attached to the man. They're getting attached to who they want the man to be, who they are expecting the man to be, the image and the fantasy that was created in their mind on who they are believing this man to be. If you never have the image in your head, you don't have anything to attach to emotionally. This is how women are able to sleep with men or use men for their money and just walk away when the shit stops. Like me, I love a good love bomber. I love a good love bomber. You want to know why? Because when the bombing stops, I leave. When the gifts stop, when the gifts stop, I leave. When the romanticism stops, I fucking leave. I got shoes, jewelry, clothes, all types of shit for men. When it stopped, I left because I already know that they're not leading in with those types of things, with that type of treatment from a genuine place. They are doing it to hook you. Men can only win the game with you if you allow them to allow you to get hooked. The man that approached you, that's being nice to you, giving you all this lip service, giving you all these lines about how he likes you and what he sees in you, understand he's playing the game, okay? The number one reason and the only reason why he came to you. He's playing the game. What, I don't, what, what game is this? And I think she will go on and, and kind of flesh it out a little bit. But I think men men are driven that way, what she's just said. And men have to go through that etiquette or something similar to it in order to kind of get to any stage in a relationship, same way they're going to have to pay for the first date, pay for the second date, pay for a couple of dates, treat her ever so often and like pay some kind of positive interest in that person that you're trying to chat up. Yeah, all these things are true, but it doesn't mean that they're playing some game. It's just that they're having to follow an etiquette, you know, be the traditional role in some way. You know what I mean? That's what it is. But if you think that a man's only doing it to her, you know, to do the naughty little rub, have a little naughty wiggle, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he's going to want, but it may not be the only reason. And if I think, I think it's a bit reductionist to think that is the only reason because many relationships stem from exactly what you've just described. Somebody expresses interest in you and is interested in you and takes you out and wants to invest in getting to know you. And that's that's the way that I think more or less every relationship starts. So um, yeah, anyway, it's because he wanted to sleep with you. When women complain about being lusted over, it's a dumb complaint. It's a wasted complaint. Men, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, okay? Men don't look at women and just think, oh, that's the type that I'm gonna marry. That's the type that I'm gonna just sleep with. They're lying when they say that. They look at, they look at most women as a woman that they would wanna sleep with. So just know and understand that. He only approached you because he wanted to sleep with you. So when you're having conversation with this man and you know that, you can learn to disassociate. This is what men do with women. So a man has to try to play the game to make you feel like he's actually interested in you as a person. This is why they want you to have these conversations. This is why you're yapping so much during these dates because they want you to believe that they actually give a fuck about your thoughts, your feelings, your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations. They are pretending, okay? They don't give a fuck about any of that. I've had men just straight out admit this to me. I literally have it in text messages of men literally telling me that, you know, I'll, I'll give you the drinks, I'll have the conversations with you, but really, I just want to bang you. So learn to disassociate when they're talking. Think about something else, okay? And when they ask you a question, just be like, oh, yeah, that's great. Like, I would love that. And just shake your head. Mm -hmm. Just smile. Mm -hmm. Just shake your head. And just let them do all the talking. Hear them. Never listen to them. Just let the words just go in your ear and don't think about anything that they are saying. Provide nothing to them unless they are giving you something. And even then, don't... Listen, obviously, outcomes for this, outcomes for this, if you switch off emotionally, you're just kind of you're not genuinely interested in somebody. What outcome? What's the outcome going to be? It's not going to be a relationship, is it, at the end of the day? It's not going to be anything at all. It's, it's going to be very cold and distant, and uh, he, he's probably not going to give you any time of day. And if you are the kind of person who's cold, distant, and not worth the time of day, and not very good company, but let's say you may be all be still attractive, what do you think he may well take... What do you think his interest kind of reduces down to? You know what I mean? It's going to be the naughty wiggle and maybe not even that. You know what I mean? So um, this outcome is really bad advice to say if you want to have a relationship. Provide anything to them. Listen, he is only coming to you for SEX, okay? That is the only reason why he is coming to you. So that is all that you should give him only if you are getting what you want out of the deal. And this is the thing. You have to be intentional about what you want out of this game. What do you want out of this game? Do you want money? Do you want um, connections to advance in your career? Do you want to increase your social status? Do you want to increase your social power? What do you want to win out of this game? For me personally, I have a lot of pride. So when I am... To be fair to the girl, she's never pretended that this video that she's putting forwards is about establishing a relationship and engendering a relationship and finding the one. Her video, as she says, 
is only about playing games. So listen, let's not be. I'm going to not be distracted. <laughs> For any woman out there who wants to be a game player, then she's she's giving you the code, and she's absolutely right. But let's not confuse this, including myself, that this is in any way some route map to a successful relationship. The relationship is not what she's talking about. And again, to be fair to the girl, she never said that she was. So let's just get this clear in our minds. I've got it. Playing the game with men, I'm always going to play the game with men to boost my ego, to have have my pride kind of be heightened for me to kind of know, you know what, that man, he paid me, he paid these bills, he bought me this, he bought me that, he did all this shit for me. And as soon as he stopped, I left. I left. I'm telling you, as soon as a man switches up on you and you leave the very first time, you leave the very first fucking time, you are going to leave that man you're gonna, he's gonna be down bad. Mentally, he's gonna fucking be down bad because he realizes that he couldn't hook you. He could not hook you. The way to win the game with men is to make them believe that you're hooked and you're really not hooked. Here's the thing. Some women love playing these mind games, thinking it gives them control or some sort of power in the dating world. But in reality, it only leads to one thing. Winning stupid prizes, like ending up single and wondering why. They set up these unnecessary tests and hoops for men to jump through thinking that if they make a guy work for it, it'll somehow guarantee a better relationship. But what they don't realize is that good men aren't interested in playing games. They're looking for authenticity and real connection, not mind games and manipulation. These women are out here playing hard to get, setting crazy standards, or acting uninterested to see how much effort a guy will put in. But here's the kicker. Most men will simply walk away. The good ones, the ones who actually have something to offer, aren't going to waste time on someone who doesn't know what they want. And that's where the stupid prize comes in. They end up single and frustrated, constantly complaining that there are no good men left, when really, it was their own games that pushed those men away. At the end of the day, relationships aren't about testing people or making them prove themselves through unnecessary drama. It's about mutual respect, communication, and understanding. But if you're too busy playing games, you'll miss out on the real thing. And unfortunately for some, that realization comes way too late when they've already scared off all the good men. Future husband, I need you to stop fucking around with those Again, again, I think myself and the narrator got went down the wrong, the wrong track. Again, yeah, listen, if somebody's taking this kind of pathway, the stripper mindset, <laughs> and thinking that it's going to end up in an actual relationship, then that's wrong. The more that your life parallels what, the, what she was talking about, it's not going to end up in a relationship. But if you are trying to play games and leverage men for money, like she is, because she's a, she's a stripper, you know what I mean? Um, then then follow the advice. <laughs> All right, so we've got a, a, a girl here, and she actually starts off quite sweet. So I've watched this a bit of this video, most of this uh, of her little segment. Starts off quite sweet, and I think she knew what she was talking about, but then <laughs> it just, there's a point, and I hope you spot it as well, where it just kind of falls off a cliff, and it's like, oh man, no, you just, I don't know, you're a bit slightly uh, broken. And come find me, hurry up. I'm tired of fucking waiting for you to be done with your fucking whole stage, and find me. I'm tired. I don't want you to find me wrinkly. I want you to find me now, where I'm nice. Like, hurry up. Hurry the fuck up. I don't want to be walking behind my kids because I'm so fucking old. I want to be running behind those little motherfuckers. Hurry the fuck up. I'm tired of waiting. I'm ready to settle the motherfucking down. Come on. Also, make sure you have a really good savings account because uh, I have a lot of business ideas. So <laughs> I'm going to need you to invest in all of my fucking ideas that I have. So hurry the fuck up and keep saving money because we're going to need it. Here's the thing. Only simps will fall into this trap. Men are waking up and realizing that their peace of mind is priceless, and no amount of potential or maybe in a relationship is worth sacrificing that peace. It's not just about the present, it's about the future. Men are thinking long term, and they're realizing that these red flags don't go away, they only get worse. Her future husband isn't looking to sign up for a lifetime of stress and emotional labor. He's not interested in constantly trying to prove himself, meeting impossible standards, or dealing with someone who brings more chaos than calm into his life. And frankly, most men have reached the point where they see that the juice just ain't worth the squeeze anymore. Why invest in something that's only going to drain you? Men are out here building their best lives, focusing on their goals, and finding peace in their own space. They don't need someone who's going to come in and disrupt that. If she's throwing up red flags left and right, she's sending a clear message. She's not ready for a real relationship, and any man with sense is going to recognize that and keep it moving. Men are choosing peace, stability, and their own well-being over the headache of trying to make a relationship work with someone who's already showing they're not worth the effort. And honestly, that's the smartest decision they could make. The frustrating reality is, is that if you are a woman and... Yeah, I think she started off quite sweet, just saying like, listen, uh, I'm tired of all the games, I'm tired of all the games, just to come and find me. But then she started playing games, I don't know, I don't know how, how playful that was, or whether she was serious about, you've got to have a savings account because I've got business ideas now. <laughs> so that's why I'm thinking, I hope she's being playful. Why, why, is some, why has a different individual got to finance her business plans? Why isn't she financing her business plans? Is it, 
Um, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't think most people are like that, and um, I think I think she's just being playful. Maybe uh, it's not too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just leave it at that and move on. You want <laughs> Here we go. To date men, you have to accept that you will have to teach them and you will have to hold them accountable. And there are so many reasons for this, but I believe that the main reason is friendship. Women have so much more practice in elements of having a relationship than men do because from a young age, we have access to vulnerability and intimacy and connection in a way that men do not get until their first partner. For most women, even when we are as young as like eight years old, we are learning about how to set boundaries. We are learning about how to communicate because we have best friends, because we have best friends with other women. We are learning about what intimacy and connection means. And even if you were dating a man with the best of intentions that is kind and that listens and when you rant about the patriarchy and how much men suck, they agree with you and they're not defensive and they're so open to everything that you say. It doesn't matter how good their intentions are. You will always have to teach them. I don't really feel like men can ever catch up to women. Like this definitely lessens as you get older. Like I'm 25 now, so the dating range of men that I would engage with is like 25 to 30 and almost all of them will have had multiple relationships. But if a man has had like two or three relationships from age 18 to 26, let's say, how is that going to make up for 18 years of not having real practice with connection and communication and boundaries? I genuinely think that this societal idea of like women mature faster than men is not entirely innate it's not entirely due to the nature of being a woman so much of it is due to the fact that we are held accountable by close connections and close proximity to others from day one and i feel like we're seeing a societal trend right now of women refusing to date men which i totally get like it's something i've taken space of but this whole idea of going boy sober it sort of just perpetuates this right because as long as we live in a society where men can only practice connection through their romantic connections with women this is always going to be a problem. In the least picking way possible, I feel like I have a lot of empathy for men and for the male experience. I've had male partners. I have, you know, a lot of male friends and I've talked about this with all of them. And I just don't think that this is something that can be solved easily on an individual level. Like even if you are a man that has the utmost awareness of this dilemma and really endeavors to solve issues with emotional vulnerability and intimacy, you can't like talk to a wall. Like you need other people to pursue friendship and connection the same way that you do. Men get so triggered on here when I use the word patriarchy, but this is what I mean when I say that the patriarchy hurts men just as much as it hurts women. It perpetuates male loneliness because this idea that we have of masculinity, this performative masculinity, perpetuates male loneliness. And whilst women who date men are severely frustrated by this increasing lack of dateable men, I think it's because men have less practice with connection than ever before as capitalism is ramped up and community is more and more disconnected than it's ever been before. Frustrating as this all is, I do feel like women at least have each other. They at least have the vulnerability of sisterhood, the vulnerability of being able to safely be emotional. Whereas I feel like men are just getting lonelier and lonelier and lonelier and we're seeing like ramped up levels of insult culture and even violence. I'm not at all making this video to excuse men for their poor behavior or to excuse them from taking accountability or to say that you should lower your standards when it comes to dating men. You absolutely should not. I'm more just making it to say that the conversation as to why the dating landscape is so bad is multifaceted and stems from how lonely society has become. Women have had more relationship practice. Yet... Interesting. Um, I think this is a psychology graduate like myself uh, for, for the things that she's touching on. She's talking about kind of social conditioning. Um, but I think she's making inferences and trying to kind of look into the eyes of a man um, and just making the kind of widest, broad assumptions that men are almost kind of autistic. I was just trying to, she almost like she was describing an autistic spectrum <laughs> for, for like the everyday man until he kind of has it's this kind of like, um, what do they call it now? Social reality testing, exposure to society and learning by doing, learning by being with ladies, I think, I guess, I think, I don't know. Um, that we kind of build these social skills. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's any foundation to any of it. I think there's just kind of um, a more natural inclination that she's trying to kind of pigeonhole to be something other than that. So, so, so boys just like to go out there and run around and there are some girls that like to go out there and run around, but some of them just like to sit down and kind of play with the kind of more kind of nurturing type things when guys and when little boys be pulling the arms off frogs and women and little girls will be prettier fighting something it's just the way it is but it is that is that kind of nature or nurture i think that's what she was to, uh, touching on and um yeah i think that's guys be on this video but uh I, I don't believe if just to summarize that men are kind of on any kind of autistic spectrum where we learn by doing and that we don't have uh, social skills in the same way or similar way than women. Um, we don't have the same interest as women generally, because you know, we're men. And uh, I don't think we want that, do we? There's that yin and yang. So uh, if we're all the same, then that would be boring, but um, a slightly different perspective on things. I think is a healthy, and I think that there is some truth, but it's, and there's a mixture of everything, obviously, of uh, the more objective thoughts on one side and the more kind of subjective thoughts on the other and that's where you get that kind of harmony and balance and of course 
both can do both, but there's probably just inclinations one way or another, and there's a mixture of everything in between. Let's not generalize this scope. Somehow, they still end up failing miserably in so many ways. They claim to know everything about men, relationships, and how things should be, but the reality is they often miss the mark completely. It's almost laughable when you see these early 20s women preaching about men and relationships as if they've cracked the code. They're out here giving advice and acting like experts, but they barely lived, barely experienced anything meaningful, and barely understand what makes a real partnership work. Here's the thing. Relationships aren't just some game where you can go through the motions and then expect everything to work out. But so many women treat it that way, especially early on. They'll follow some formula they think guarantees success, thinking if a guy doesn't act a certain way or fit into their predefined mold, he's the problem. But maybe, just maybe, the issue is that they're trying to mold men into something they're not. Women always think they know the best way to live life, the best way for men to communicate, and the best way for men to act. But newsflash, men don't think and act like women. They never have, and they never will. So instead of trying to force men to be something they're not, maybe it's time for women to start accepting men for who they are. And the double standard here is insane. If a man dared to speak this generally about women, if he pointed out their flaws in the same way, he'd be labeled a misogynist in a heartbeat. But when a woman does it, somehow she's empowering or empathetic. It's frustrating to see women talk down to men, acting like they have all the answers, and then wonder why men don't open up or communicate the way they want them to. If women want men to open up, maybe they should stop with the constant barrage of patriarchy talk. Men are tired of hearing how they're supposedly oppressing women just by existing. Constantly telling men that they're the problem and that they need to do better isn't going to make them open up. It's just going to push them away, make them retreat, and shut down. Men have feelings too, but they don't express them in the same way that women do. And that's okay. We don't need to be the same. So here's the reality check. Stop preaching about relationships as if you've got it all figured out. Stop trying to mold men into your version of what you think they should be. And most importantly, stop acting like men are inherently the problem. If you really want men to open up, try understanding them for who they are, not who you want them to be. Until women can grasp that, they'll keep failing in relationships, no matter how much practice they've had. It is something that's so sexy and attractive. Damn, narrator. Get that mic. Get that mic there. Mic drop, mic drop moment. And again, as I said, I do like this channel, uh, the men only channel. You can't see it, it's hidden behind the uh, the double T's of the attractive in the uh, message below. Uh, obviously, I don't, as I said before, I don't agree with everything that he says on this particular video. And there's some things I do agree with, of course, there is, you know what I mean? But um, amazing channel. Um, I like working in this kind of partnership thing. I work with this guy as an influence, and there's many others, and I'm do my own standalone videos as well. I'm definitely going to do more of those. I've obviously got, <laughs> you know, my, my own opinion on many things. And anyway, let's go. Attractive? Uh, hands up, me. Let's go. When a man just be a man, like taking leadership, taking initiative, planning things, taking the load off, like it's so attractive. Like you don't even gotta ask for it. Just be like, what you need? That's taken care of. You need that refill. You got that? Uh, you remember you had to do that? Like, and then it start making you look at me and I can't even plan a date. Like they're crazy. Cause if a man can't plan a date, baby, he can't plan a future. Men today are realizing that putting in the effort to... No, I think, listen, uh, <laughs> that's quite sweet. Maybe I need to go back and just play the whole video just to see what it is. I think in summary, she likes a man who can be the organizer, which goes back to the previous video. This goes back to the previous video. Men are more kind of inclined to do this objective thing. So women may... Have you ever been... Listen, put it this way. Have you ever been on a date with a lady? You hand her the menu and there's like a... There's like an amazing amount of weight... It's almost like, oh, what, you just don't need, you literally don't know what you want to eat. You know what I mean? You get kind of like drawn into the detail of things. That's, and that's part of the reason that kind of micro, kind of uh, whatever thought process that is. <laughs> I'm going to say emotional thought process, but it's probably not. But anyway, just kind of can't detach themselves from problem kind of issue why they appreciate a man or somebody else who can detach from and say, okay, yeah, this is what we're going to do. So you actually come to a conclusion. It's like, ah, it's like a weight off the shoulders, I guess, for for some ladies. That's, that's my interpretation of it. I don't know, but it seems to fit what we're saying here, right? So a man who can organize and put things together, it just kind of puts that with that, that kind of relief off a lady. And that's why they, maybe that's why they appreciate it. Let's, let's go back and hear what she's got to say. I think it's right here. I think probably and then we'll hear the narrator after. That's so sexy and attractive when a man just be a man. Like taking leadership, taking initiative, planning things, taking the load off. Like it's so attractive. Like you don't even gotta ask for it. Just be like, what you need? That's taken care of. You need that refill. You got that. Uh, you remember you had to do that? Like. And then it start making you look at me and I can't even plan a date. Like they're crazy. Because if a man can't plan a date, baby, he can't plan a future. Planning the date, giving a reminders about stuff, planning the future, again, is that objective thought. And also she likes somebody who's a provider who kind of does like the nice kind of, uh, the additional stuff, you know, do you want to refill? <laughs> yeah, give us some like free money, basically, some like sprinkle, I guess. But yeah, it's that kind of, uh, as I said, we get it. 
You're welcome. <laughs> Men today are realizing that putting in the effort to plan dates, make gestures, and go above and beyond for women just isn't worth it anymore. The return on investment isn't there, and frankly, it's exhausting. It's always the same story. Men put in the effort, and women come back with criticism or more demands. They want a man to plan the perfect date, to take control, and be the leader in a relationship. Yet when it comes time for them to step up and actually be a woman, suddenly there's silence. Where's the effort from their side? And the irony is, if a guy doesn't plan a date perfectly or doesn't meet their high standards, they'll throw out lines like, if he can't plan a date, he can't plan a future. Really? So, a guy's entire worth is based on whether or not he can plan a night out according to your liking. It's almost laughable. They expect men to have every detail figured out while they just sit back, critique, and decide whether the man is worthy of their time. But here's the kicker. They want a man to act like a man, to take charge, to be assertive, and to lead. Yet they can't even hold up their end of the deal. Women love to talk about men being providers and protectors, but when it comes to being supportive, nurturing, or even just appreciating the effort, they fall short. How is a man supposed to build a future with someone who doesn't reciprocate the energy, who doesn't bring anything to the table beyond just showing up? A relationship is supposed to be a partnership, but too often, it feels one-sided, with men doing all the heavy lifting while women pick and choose what they want to contribute. It's no wonder men are done planning dates. Why go out of your way to plan something special when it's just going to be picked apart or taken for granted? Men are realizing their time and energy are valuable, and they're no longer willing to waste it on someone who doesn't appreciate them or bring anything meaningful to the relationship. If women want men to plan dates and futures, maybe they should start by acting like women, by showing respect, appreciation, and being someone worth building a future with. Until then, men are going to keep checking out of the dating scene, and honestly, who can blame them? Yeah, listen, I, I agree with what he's saying, you know, not in relation to the girl, not in relation to the girl, she's actually quite sweet. <laughs> and I think she was actually trying to be quite positive and just say, listen, I like men, I like, I like traditional men who can organise things, and yeah, I, I, let's ignore the sprinkle bit. You know what I mean? Because as I say, uh, we're meant to be equals, you know, we're not meant to be kind of exploiting people just for free dinners and, you know, free dates. But I, I do understand that about just at least planning somebody. Listen, if a man's trying to chat somebody up and if a man's inviting somebody out, aka the lady, then at least he should plan what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? And if, yeah, first couple of dates, if you're inviting her out, then yeah, one, you've, you've 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 asked her out, right? Then pay for <laughs> then pay for it. Or if you if you're going to invite her out, don't don't go somewhere where you have to pay for something. And yeah, fair enough. If she doesn't want to go, then she's not for you. You know what I mean? There you go. Case closed. But yeah, I think uh, I think her energy was actually quite sweet. It was in the nice zone. Yes, it would have been nice. And I don't know if she went on to say about other ways that she actually is interested is interested. Mm -hmm in looking after her man and not just being looked after. I don't know, we'll never know if she went on to say that. And I say there's too many examples where they don't, but I don't know enough about this girl to know whether she's worthy of that kind of uh, objective criticism or not. But anyway, nice video, I really enjoyed it. Um, hope you all enjoyed it too. Please like, subscribe, that is Stephen, I am out.